With devices of all kinds finding their way into the classroom or onto school premises, one of the issues that is increasingly falling onto every school's agenda is how to maintain the digital safety of learners while they are at school. I have with me in studio e-safety specialist Mark Curry, who's also the founder and managing director of VirtuNet, supplier of e-safety technology solutions for schools. Thanks, Mark, for being here and helping to put us into the picture. Thank you for having me. So what is the school's responsibility when it comes to e-safety at school? Well, our Department of Education expects that uh, schools create a safe online environment for our children. So this is a legal requirement? Um, it's not legislated, but it certainly is expected. Okay. And schools really have a duty of care to protect uh, learners when they are on the school premises, you know, when a child is at school, they're in loco parentis, so the teachers are in place of parent, uh, parent and really there's a, an obligation for them to ensure that um, the, the, uh, there is a safe online environment for learners. When okay, so school. this starts off with a user policy, That's usually. correct, always. That is the first fundamental th foundation that needs to be laid, is that schools need to have an adequate acceptable usage policy um, before they embark on any e-learning initiatives or providing um, internet access to, to students. Okay, but then it's more than that because now mm. we've got the devices. Either bring your own devices yes. or the school has bought in uh, mobile yep. sets of iPads, tablets, yes. etc. that kids are using or laptops in a computer center. Yes. How do they um, monitor what's going on and manage what's going on on devices yes. on their premises? Well, there's a variety of technologies that need to be used. The, the, mo the core technology that needs to be used is, of course, web content filtering and web management at the internet gateway at the school okay. to protect every device that's on the network. That'll be coupled with mobile device management solutions that will be software on a tablet or another mobile device, whether it's school owned or student owned, that manages what applications can be used, what content can be viewed, you know, how those devices are used, you know, and ensuring they're used for educational purposes only. And then of course what we're seeing the trend around the world now is also to have monitoring technologies to in, in a sense allow more freedom on the internet but to monitor what's happening on the internet. So a listening system. That's right. So any uh, cyber bullying, predator to grooming, racism, swearing, signs of depression, um, drug abuse, alcohol. Okay, so um, these will come up as yeah. alerts that the, the school That's can right. then yeah. investigate so it a little bit further. monitors the whole school network, monitors what's happening in computers and devices, and will effectively alert um, uh, a school IT administrator or teacher or, or principal as to what is actually happening on their network. So it gives them the tools to actually enforce their acceptable usage policy. Okay, and would those tools be able to literally pinpoint whose device is being used for what? Um, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of the schools sort of just focus, oh, we will just have web management or web filtering. But what's happening offline or what are kids posting even on allowed websites? What are they posting on those blogs? Is there cyberbullying taking place? What about inappropriate images being shared on a network and even stuff being, you know, in a, in a Word document or an offline or a application, that a PowerPoint, from yeah, home. and they sort of hiding content in there or what are they saying, you know, who are they chatting to online using okay. chat applications? These are some of the technologies. This is the visibility that schools actually need beyond traditional web filtering systems that most schools okay. already have in place. Now, when you talk about cyberbullying, mm. um, what are we experiencing here? What's the sort of most innocuous form of cyberbullying and what is the worst form of cyberbullying that well, you're really, seeing? Well, um, really, South Africa is still in a, you know, cyberbullying is not really known here. It's starting to sort of, we're starting to see sexting and issues of cyberbullying starting to surface in sexting? schools. Sexting? Can you just explain yep. that sexting for Sexting is basically when children take inappropriate images of themselves and share it on the internet, you know, upload it to the internet or share it with, with, with other people. And this is of, yeah. often happening with teenagers who are in that risk-taking phase, who are being impulsive, that, who are looking right. for attention. Somebody that's promises right. them affection that's right. and attention yeah. and they'll do whatever it takes in order to fit that's in. Right. But they don't realise that these things go viral so quickly that's right. and can ruin their reputation that's right. literally for the rest of their school career, mm. if not further and beyond right. um, in their lives. So we need to create an awareness among our own children Absolutely. of their media habits while also keeping a watchful That's eye right. on, on what That's they're right. doing. So how um, 
how important is it to keep track of the paper trail, so to speak, yes. when it comes to cyberbullying? Well, it certainly is very important. You know, often cyberbullying or predator grooming can, you know, result in physical harm or loss of life, even in yes, you know, suicide been cases and of things suicide, like that. Yes. And, you know, certainly if law enforcement authorities, every school should have an e safety officer that works with local law enforcement authorities, you know, and also for pastoral intervention and counseling and so on. Why, they need to have that visibility, they need to have as you say, the paper trail of evidence. Yeah. So one of the things we need to teach our kids is not to delete um, that paper trail, that email trail, <laughs> yes. every, because the first thing they want to do is get rid of the evidence because they're so embarrassed about yes. what's happening, with whether they're the perpetrator or whether they're yes. the victim. Yes. Um, but certainly, as far as victims are concerned, we need to make sure we've got the proof, the evidence. Absolutely. Now, your systems at VirtuNet make sure that all Absolutely. that data all, is captured. It's all stored in a tamper-proof database, um, that whether they erase web history or whatever it is that they're trying to erase, we keep a track record of that. What I really like about your system is that it can work seamlessly between home and school. Yes. And I think there's often a disconnect yes. between what schools yeah. are doing, what parents are doing yes. or not doing. That's right. And that's where things yeah. fall through yeah. the gaps and where there's yeah. this inconsistency yes. and where we need to have consistency in a time of real yes. fluidity and change for our teenagers yeah. is to provide this um, sort of uniform uh, right. digital safety solution. And I'm, and I'm really pleased that you mentioned this because this is really the thrust of what we do as virtue. This is what makes us different to everybody else out there is our vision is to create a safer internet in South Africa and to do that through the schools, through the schools to train and equip the teachers and the parents, um, you know, teaching them about online dangers and not only that, reinforcing it with the correct technology tools, not only to just help schools to comply and to protect themselves from liability and to fulfill their duty of care, but to actually empower parents with the technologies to use because parents don't know what to do. They are overwhelmed. There are thousands of apps out yeah. there. They don't understand the technologies. So what we do, you know, in a recent UNICEF report actually said it's imperative that schools get involved in helping parents, um, you know, who are often technically challenged, yes. should we say, to, uh, to, to, to have the right technology. So what we do as VirtuNet is we, through the schools, get the technologies on, you know, the safety technologies onto the mobile phones, the computers, the tablets. And basically when that device is at school, the school has control as to what content can be viewed, what applications can be used. As soon as that device goes off network, the parent has control of okay. that device. Now, one last thing mm. before we close, um, and we need to be quite mm. quick, and mm. this is about geofencing and geolocation yes. of kids. You know, we worry about kids being abducted, etc. Yes. Now, your, your, solu your e-safety solution yes. um, resolves Yes, this, this is a very, it? very important uh, uh, technology that we have on cell phones. You can track who your child's been talking to, who's messaging them, very important. But certainly with the geo-tracking, what that is, is whether it's using the cell phone's GPS or the tablet's GPS, even if that's disabled, it uses the cell phone towers to triangulate a position. And basically, you can set approved zones, the home, the local school, a friend's house and so on, and be notified when a child arrives in those zones or leaves those zones. Without your child Ex having to SMS you. Exactly. Ah. So <laughs> if they say, for example, I'm going to stay at Mary's house on a Friday night, but they end up at a nightclub in town, you will know about it. But this is not a matter of snooping because this tool is invaluable. If a child is abducted, we all know that every hour that elapses when a child is abducted, then it becomes much, much harder to, to, to locate that child. A parent can immediately go into their web dashboard, their parent dashboard, and it keeps up to a four month history with regular checks throughout the day, every day of where wow. that child has been. And that is just invaluable information, you know, to, Fantastic. to, to, to give you know, to and the who team. did the child yeah. last speak to and for how long and, you know, were they perhaps talking sure. to a, 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 predator, a sexual predator or some, somebody like that. So this is not just about 
um, protecting from harmful web content is actually protecting your children in the real world. Real world. Mark, thank you so much for putting us in the picture, for giving us some practical handles on how to implement digital safety at schools that can give us all peace of mind. After all, we want technology to enhance our children's learning and not threaten their safety. For links to what was discussed on the show today and how to connect with Virtunet, visit NikkiBush.com and click on the Nikki Bush TV tab. On that note, I dare you to go and change the world one parent, one teacher, one leader at a time.